we might make a start. Um, uh, so the presentation um, is on the occasion of Peter leaving us sadly uh, in UCC uh, to um, uh, take up a position in uh, in Rome and um, the Observatory for Social Qu Quality, uh, Eurispace. Uh, I won't give it the Italian because I won't be able to pronounce it. Um, and as you, some of you may know, uh, Peter also holds um, association visiting professorships in universities, including Corvinus University in Hungary and Kuopio University, Kuopi? Kuopi University in Finland. Um, so the title of um, this evening's lecture, Reinventing the Wheel or Squaring the Circle, Sustainable Social Quality versus Social Policy. Um, there'll be opportunity for questions and answers. Uh, you're, you're responsible for the questions. It's up to Peter to provide the, the, the answers, I guess. And um, there is a reception uh, upstairs uh, in the social area upstairs afterwards um, kindly provided by the uh, School of Applied Social Studies. So, Peter. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for coming. It is actually confusing. It's not the University of Kuopio. It's the University of Eastern Finland, which had been the University of Kuopio. Uh, and I won't tell you anything new, and you have to find the answers to be clear on this. Uh, it, I say this now because it is very much about shifting borders and uh, we are dealing for a long time more or less with basically the same questions. And to some extent, well, you definitely will be surprised to see me here with PowerPoint, uh, but to some extent it's just a presentation of things like this to show that we are dealing with something that we usually take for granted. And I have this from a Norbert Elias Foundation uh, journal, Norbert being asked where's the PowerPoint. And yes, there it is. So we have concepts, we have something in mind, we have terms, we are using terms without really considering what we are doing. We use them without considering the historical or socio-historical and socio-economic uh, context. In this way, it is as well relevant uh, what you all mentioned, uh, the, my activities in Corvinus University and in Kuopio, which is more or less um, something with economics. And I say something with economics uh, be because it is more social economics, uh, social economy, political economy uh, than the classical economy. Uh, actually, I'm pretty proud uh, of the position in Cor at Corvinus University because what they do is they reclaim basically their traditions had been the Karl Marx University during the socialist times. Um, there was a struggle about it. Should they keep the name? They didn't keep the name. It's now Corvinus University, but they kept the tradition. So we are dealing with something that is between at least two things. The one is structures. We are looking at structures, and at the same time we are dealing with processes. This is a very trivial knowledge we all have, but at the same time I think we, are don't, we, we do not acknowledge it sufficiently when we are talking about what is, what has been social policy. My fundamental point of reference or thesis is we should actually forget talking about social policy, or what we should do at least is we should reconsider the way in which we are using social policy. Social policy, the traditional link was very much to the idea of ancient Greek philosophy, the zoon politikon, the political animal, the social animal the social existence, but there was one important point that the social was actually never clearly defined. If you go back and read Aristotle, it was this idea of the zoon politikon. If you go to the translations, it's not clear if we actually should talk about 
the animal, the being in the polity, or if we should talk about something completely different of social interaction. It is even questionable or difficult to say something about Aristotle. Was he a philosopher? Was he economist? So we have blurring borders there as well. And his understanding was very much something of, I am philosopher, I am economist, but economy is about a good life and about managing something in good life in a highly stratified society. In any case, what one core of this is about, it is about human beings as acting beings. So the social being, social existence is always as well something that is about not only interaction, but action. I make historically huge step to Scheller, who said, man only plays when in the full meaning of the word he is a man, and he's only completely a man when he plays. But I think this is something we should learn as well when we are talking about academic work. Just try to play with ideas, try to play with realities and construct and reconstruct. It. We do it anyway. We do it all the time that we combine different theories, that you combine different elements of society and of social analysis. But in many cases, we are fixed into certain concepts of thinking. We are fixed in certain concepts of societies as we see them, as we know them, as we experience them. What Schiller actually meant is playing in a very serious way, not in the way simply of something like dance, of something like the beauty of dance, something like Swan Lake here, something where we simply see the beauty of something that is very harmonious, but that he said play, the real play, as he understood it, is being in control actually of ourselves in reality, in the space in which we are moving. It is about power, definitely about power, but it is, and I come back later to this, it is about power in ways or by way of a certain order, a certain balance. It strikes me a couple of times, actually I once gave this as an exam question, the fascination of power. If we go on holidays, we usually end up visiting buildings, monuments, of powers that we basically reject. Those who are not Christians go to the St. Peter in Rome, to the Vatican, the state of 800 people. Those who are against monarchy go to Beckham Palace or wherever it is. It's the celebration of something great that is standing there and that is providing something as a structure something that is able to stand on its own feet. Michelangelo's, Michelangelo's David, the first statue, supposedly, I'm not entirely sure if it is the case, the first statue supposedly standing on its own leg without support. A masterpiece masterpiece of beauty, of greatness. You don't have to like it. But you see something is going on in the statue that provides this order, that provides this balance, that is simply fascinating in its independence. As the Florentine chronicler Luca Landucci noted in his diary, stones were thrown at the colossal sculpture even if it was being transported from the Office of Works so that the guard had to be mounted to protect it. Now comes the point. The stone-throwing youth came from pro-Medici Medici families for whom the pr prospect of a figure with Republican connotations 
being installed in front of the seat of the Florentine government must have been thoroughly un up unpaneled. It's on a, from a book on Michelangelo. And it is this, this tension of establishing a structure against the ruling ideas, against the ruling class, set in stone here literally with David, not movable. How do we do with, uh, how do we deal with this? Just from Vasari's great work, a uh, lengthy quote, or a little story, it's about Piero Soderini, who saw this magnificent state, uh, statue, and he admired it, but he had to criticize it, saying to Michelangelo, there's something wrong. The nose is actually too large. You should change it. Michelangelo, climbing up the scaffold, taking his uh, tools and taking a little bit of dust of the work he did before. And then beginning to strike lightly with, this, uh, with the chisel, <coughs> let fall the dust little by little, not change the nose um, a whit from, the, from, what it, uh, from the what it had been before. Then looking down at the Gonfaldonia, who stood watching him, he said, look at it now. I like it better, said the Gonfalonier. You have given it life. And so Michelangelo came down laughing to himself at having satisfied that Lord, for he had compassion on those who, in order to appear full of knowledge, talk about things of which they don't, do, don't know anything. This is the way how we deal with structures and how we do deal with small, more or less small changes. And this is something where, in the abstract I said this, where we are dealing as well with scientific work as a kind of discipline. Discipline as a framework for generating knowledge, but as well as a framework for disciplining, discipline of thinking. We put it into boxes, and it is there where it is, and it is there where it should be. Don't open the box. Don't cross the borders. You may play a little bit with dust, but not with anything more. One fundamental challenge and target of social science or social of science in general is of course finding out structures, finding out laws, kind of structures, and this is by observing reality. Observing reality as it is. And there's this nasty word, and we all know it, and I use it now as a little bit as a provocation to solve it solve it afterwards. It's about bean counters. It's about people who work with statistics, as my dear friend Joe, who exactly does this, but who says as well, and this is the only quote I give from one of the colleagues here, one of the most effective applications of indicators is not merely to describe but also to analyze, thereby sometimes changing the definition of a problem. We need figures, we need these measures, we need these structures, but at the same time we should never forget what Joe said in the book, in an article on indicators. It is not just a description, it is more. It is as well about changing the nature, and it is as well about something that goes much beyond just the beans in hand. It has to go beyond the framework. And with this, we are of course constructing reality. It's not about relativism. We can't, we can't construct 
reality just as we want it. But at least we can use with the tools we have our own knowledge, our development of knowledge to create something that is a changing, a reality, uh, a changing reality. Michelangelo's David, just coming back briefly, he captures exactly this point, standing as a colossus. if you know the story, possibly many of you know it better than I do, standing there fighting against another a real colossus, being relatively small, but finding exactly this one point where Goliath was vulnerable. There are several stories like this, Achilles. It's only this one point which exactly has to be featured, which, with, uh, which exactly has to be targeted to change quite a lot. Then Michelangelo, making something out of the story, making something out of a given reality, if you want, creating this David, virginity, beauty, and power, standing on its own, on his own feet. Standing on his own feet, providing a firm structure, and being immovable. He is so strong he cannot move anymore. He lost it by being lost, by being captured by exactly the structure. It was a little bit later in history. The development, late medievals, early Renaissance, age of Spinoza, omne ins habit aliquot esse proprium. Everything has, every entity has a singular essence. Every entity depends on its own laws as a structure. And then we have the critic, the, the, the person who criticizes Michelangelo. He is exactly caught in these facts. He is caught in this mindset of the structure Making a small change is okay, but he's not able to see that this change actually doesn't happen. Michael Hart, Antonio Negri, write in their book on the empire. It is about the triple imperative of the empire, which is incorporate, differentiate, and manage. Divide at emperor, it is about structuring society. And this is exactly what happens, in my opinion, when we are talking about social science and the difficulty social science has. And it is difficult. We should not forget it is a difficulty. It is not, there is no simple answer. Davidian social science, looking at structures, is nothing else than a visualized form, than a metaphor for what we usually apply in social science today, which is methodological individualism. They are looking at individuals. They are looking at people standing there. They are looking at people, at structures, at institutions that are not able to move. They move a little bit, but the basic structures are in place. And we are not able, as social science, to fundamentally rethink it. We are caught in this system of thinking, not in the institutions in which we are thinking. That's, of course, another factor. But we are thinking very much in these realms of given terms, of given institutions, as they have been developing over time. And we imagine them as kind of independent. This come, is the point where I think economics or economic thinking is very, uh, very important, that we are, in actual fact, looking at the reality 
on which these structures are based. The productive forces and the mode of production. We can develop, of course, seminars on this simply in terms of economics, but it is this re reality in, in, in the, this economic reality which is the pedestal on which all David stands. Immovable. Immovable as long as we do not touch the basis, as we are not as long as we are not thinking. In the same way as Michelangelo was in thinking, having compassion on those who, in order to appear full of knowledge, talk about things of which they know not. In many cases, it is actually about the institutions in which we are working that describe and prescribe what we have to do. If we look at applications, if we look at the requirements in terms of publication, and if we look at the requirements in terms of performance. I said it's the only quote from members of staff here I would give from Joe, and being the sentimental lecturer here of the last public lecture at UCC for a while, at least in this position, I appreciate really the friendship over the years. But I appreciate as well the collaboration with many colleagues, the publication with many colleagues. Colleagues, I'll just look at Paul, just behind Michael, Claire. It is a work which had been really valuable for me in terms of discussions, much more important than any peer reviews, much more important than being quoted wherever. It was a process of collaboration, and it was not what Weber described as specialists without spirit, sensualities, sensualist, sensualists without heart. This nullity imagines that it had, has attained a level of civilization never before achieved. Weber's description on bureaucracy. They are dead. They don't move anything they force us to stay in a certain place. Spirit of capitalism, asketism and the spirit of capitalism. Karl Marx said something similar, although it had been very different at the same time. Men make their own history, but they do not make it just as they please. They do not make it under circumstances cho chosen by themselves, but under circumstances directly encountered, given and transmitted from the past. So there we come to this point of history. Not history of a given structure, but as a process. Under this condition, of course, being forced by history, being in kind of strang uh, in, in a way strangulated by it, the dream of freedom develops easily into nightmare. The tradition of all dead genera generations weighs like a nightmare on the brain of things. Again, Karl Marx, 18th Brumaire. But, but we make the history. It is us. It is people who make history. It's not structures. We are caught in structures, all right. But there is more to it most beautiful statue, the most impressive statue I ever came across. Bernini, Gratuli Proserpina. No picture, no photo can show what it is. The dynamics in the statue. It's stone. Standing in front of it, it's in Rome, one of the Medici villas you have the impression there is real movement in stone. Of course, the title still refers to the old hegemony. Proserpina, 
In the translation, it's not cl clear if Ratho is abduction or if it's shape. But nevertheless, what you have is resistance. It is a completely new beauty if you look at this comparing with David. It's the beauty of movement. It's the beauty of power. Not standing power, but the beauty of processes. Salman Sharma in the BBC feature said this was actually the first statue moving into this direction, bringing something completely new. Changing by moving, changing by resistance, and changing structures in this way. Re-emphasizing what he sees, re-emphasizing by looking at processes. Of course, this cannot happen just because it is nice. Because Bernini was thinking, yes, we should do something different. There had been at least two conditions. The invention of the civilized individual. An emerging independence of the individual, not the emergence of an individual who is able and allowed to stand, but an individual who is able and allowed to move. And it had been the emergence of a new sphere in society, namely economics. Although we have only much later with Alfred Marshall the deletion of the political in the economy, it is beginning here. A new economy depending and made shaped by individuals, by civilized individuals who know what they are doing, who have their own ideas about what it is. And of course, it meant as well something different for the entire society, for the restructuration of society. It was the individual and the economic action. It was the desocialized economic activity. And it had been a political system built up, built upon these walls. Again, as something which was independent of the social. The Leviathan, standing there, untouchable. Just look at that topic. We discussed it. She is my first student of, her, student of the first class here, I think, uh, when she did the higher diploma. We discussed it extensively, Hobbes, Hobbes. Um, theories of state. The question of a personalized shape, state, desocialized. It was something out there, independent, seemingly independent of human action. It was an agreement, a contract written down, written in stone, and in this way meaningless again, but now from another side, from social practice. In this way, looking at Bernini's Prosepina means we're looking at a process, at the rejection, at the will, at the statement there is another world possible. And we look at it at a time when actually another world was as well necessary. These things don't fall from heaven. What we needed is expressed in something very brutal. And you can take it as a painting of victim, victims. You can pay, take it as a painting of resistance. Guernica from Pablo Picasso. Again, go there. Go to Madrid, San Lendia. Go there early in the morning. I had been there once with about four people, and this had been security that kept in the background. It is standing in front of history. 
it is so impressive that you see actually movement, that you see what we should need, what, what we would need, not a war, not being victims, but that we are able to deal with the re reality by way of completely deconstructing it and reconstructing it. Of course, on the gravel that the structures and loss processes leave behind. But at the same time, something where we need to be more radical in our thinking and to enter real processes. Not the beauty of dance as a slot swan rape, and at least some people have known how much I simply admire, enjoy this beauty. But it is a more aggressive dance. It's a more playful dance. And it is something where actually we try with our social quality approach or approach on sustainable social quality now, try to move forward to kind of reshuffle our analysis of realities and we do it very much in a way that we don't do anything new. We just reinvent the wheel. Or we take the wheels as they are and apply them to new realities. The rejection from social policy comes from this point. From the rejection of being caught in certain structures that had been given by a modern nation state under condition where they do not allow anymore this modern nation state to exist. You can take whatever you want. We talked in class today about the existence of the nation state, which still has a huge power, but at the same time which is powerless because of migration. And I'm not talking about, or I talk about different forms of migration. Me going with a German passport from Ireland to Italy, working for a Dutch institution. It's something very normal, quite normal. But no system of social policy, of social traditional social policy, is able to smoothly deal with it let alone being able to deal with migration when it comes to asylum seeking, when it comes to wars, or consequences of wars or something like this. No national system of social policy is able to deal with that. It's not policy measures that have to be criticized. Of course, they have to be criticized as well, but it's not the core of the critique. At the core of the critique stands a framework of policy making that systematically limits itself, limits progress, limits change by being rooted, and I will take at least some few points <coughs> as I said, social policy political systems, states are dealing with political measures of social policy but at the same time, they are standing outside of social processes. Just a question. I said you have to find the answers yourself, and we can discuss it afterwards. But what is it about a social policy that is desocialized, that is dealing with individuals, that is supporting individuals, but that is leaving the area of social realms? It is a distinct state independent of what actually society is about, and that is about an economic entity, and it is about the reproduction and production of real life. I can even work with text on PowerPoint, but I hope it's legible. The definition we propose of the social is this the outcome of this interaction between people constituted as actors. We go on with this individual, but as actor. And the constructed and natural environment. Its subject matter refers to people's interrelated productive and reproductive relationships. We should not forget it, that it is about this. It is not about what we do afterwards, thanks to 
joint thanks to the is it the school or was it CIS for, for the support to socialism. That's nice. But this is not what the social in terms of social policy in a wider understanding is about. In other words, the constitutive interdependency between processes of self realization and processes governing the formation of collective and identities is a condition for the social and its progress or decline. You have to analyze this carefully. And this is where we have to define as well what this decline is about. What happens in society? What happens in society that loses or changes fundamentally, more, funda more or less fundamentally, its framework of production, the productive forces, the mode of production? In other languages, we have in terms of, uh, instead of the term political economy, we have the term um, national economy. And this is very much the core of what economic thinking is about, latest since mercantilism, that it is about the construction and reconstruction of the nation state of the commonwealth for the nation, not anything beyond. It is individuals who produce, although Marx points out individuals producing in society. This is fact, but nevertheless at the same time we are always forced, pushed into this direction of producing as individuals. If we take it up or if we don't. It's not up to our free will, but it is at least up to our um, responsibility to see it in this way of where and how we are producing. All production, again, Max, I think, all production is appropriation of nature by, individual, by the individual within and by means of a def definite form of society. Even if we do it as individuals, it is happening in society. <coughs> in this sense, it is a tautology to say that property appropriation is a condition of production. We have to consider with every act we do, or we think about in terms of social policy, about exactly this perspective, being linked, being rooted in real processes and not in um, any kind of goodwill. This is especially, or not least, getting clear if you look at especially Anglo-American traditions of social policy, where funnily enough the working class doesn't play a role. Trade unions don't play a role. They play a role, of course. But if you look at international comparative studies, there is for good reason the tradition of Anglo-American uh, stances called social administration. There it has roots, not in class struggle, not in the working class movement, but in terms of a ministry and managing what is called social problems. As I said before, the depolitization, desocialization of economics in terms of thinking and in terms of action is accompanied by the desocialization of the state of political processes. Going down to management and in this way creating, establishing a trinity the market the state and communities. Confirming the state and the role of the obedient son. I forgot the father, which is of course the economy. And hoping for the community and family as a merging Holy Spirit. 
just do it there, organize yourself, do something that is cohesive. But there are the other distinct and separate elements. And law plays, of course, a huge role wherever we go, in the market, in, society, uh, in, in, uh, in the state area or in communities, law is always present. And law can be seen as the holy scripture that has the interpretation ready for everything. The third point for rejecting social policy in the traditional way is, and this is for social quality thinking as well, more or less new, is the fact that with the desocialization and individualization, we have another development, that of denaturalization. There is the environment. But this is nothing where we have to worry about. And we build environment. It's not just there. We always change it. But this is something for engineers. Urban planning is such an, a huge, huge important area. But at the same time, it's always sidelined. It's a specialist area that is not a question, not seen as a question that is immediately linked with the other areas. With this, human beings are still able to act. But I'm afraid, or we are afraid, that the ability to practice, the social practice, the social movement, actually declines. Individualism, detached from socio-ecological -ecolog uh, causal contextual foundations, dissolved, disjoined from reproductive and productive matters of existence. In this way, I think, as social scientists, this historical day, not because I'm leaving, somebody else is leaving, this historical day of contradicting. Since about, I get actually always different information, since at least 600 years, somebody contradicted fundamentally. Benedetto. He leaves office today. Dante Alighieri, writing about the different stages of what comes after life, had for him something very special. Grand refusal. The great refusal. This was the most severe punishment we find in the Bible. Because somebody contradicted, fundamentally contradicted, questioned the given structures. I don't know what happens to Benedetto now. We have to wait for Alighieri too. And I'm afraid that I know a little bit about what happens to us as social scientists. We won't go through this hell. I just say this because I don't believe in this thing. But I think we cause enough trouble for ourselves in permanently refusing engagement in scientific communities. Social quality claims to be a little bit an alternative approach. And I had been last week in Rome to finalize things there. And at the final discussion, there was this awkward question. Why don't you call it socialism? It's very much what you are talking about, what you are presenting is very much socialism. Why do you hide yourself and don't say it clearly? It is socialism. And I'm always very frank and open and I said, yes, you're right. 
I don't have problems with calling it socialism, but they are great academics in buts. But it is not pure socialism in terms of a given strategy. We are developing it, and we have to develop it looking at the changed conditions. Those conditions that have been there with Marx, who can be seen as a kind of first uh, step to make socialism from the utopia to science. Conditions changed. We have to change and we have to think about this as well in terms of adapting, in terms of developing what socialism is about. I come back to our responsibility as academics. Critique is the practice of exposing the social basis underlying an argument. Exposing the social basis underlying an argument. Marxist critique is generally imminent critique that is critique springing from inside. So in this way we have very much the David standing there. But critique implicitly recognizes that the argument it poses is right, but right in the context of a specific form of social practice which may not be declared. This is important in terms of thinking, thinking in historical contexts. And historical contexts are always national contexts and regional contexts. Since about two years, and especially since about three months or something, I'm getting aware, more and more aware of the meaning of it, being or cooperating to some extent with people from Bolivia from, or from Latin America, including from Cuba. In Cuba. I got an invitation to a conference in October, which exactly states these points. It's not about national developments. It's about global developments in a changing environment. And this changing environment is a changing environment in economic terms and in terms of um, in terms of, of economic uh, issues and in terms of what we usually call environmental issues. And then I said it is not socialism. It is socialism, it is not socialism, but again, it is at the end socialism. And here I refer to Antonio Gramsci, Quaderni, most awful reading, because it is not a coherent reading, it's notes all over the place. That's what you do if you are in prison and you are forced to work there. Some people say actually academia or universities are prison, which that's another question. But under these conditions, hardly be able to work physically in terms of having material. He was looking at two very important points. First, we are dealing under whichever conditions in all societies up to hitherto. We are dealing with societies that are captured, that are coined by structural contradictions by class contradictions. We know this from Marx. But he was going on, he was holding on to it, and he said this is a very fundamental point, but at the same time it doesn't answer really or it doesn't even pose the complete question. He looked at power then, and he looked at power we usually know it today more from Michel Foucault. Power about control and about knowledge. Of course, knowledge is controlled. Knowledge is always the knowledge of the ruling classes. But at the same time, this knowledge is limited. This knowledge is limited because it is disjoint, another development or another disjunction there. It is limited by not being able actually to connect permanently to social reality, what I talked before about. 
From the quaderni, the criterion on which we should base our analysis is this, that the supremacy of a social group manifests itself in two ways, as domination and as intellectual and moral leadership. A societal group is dominant over opposing groups, which it tends to liquidate or which it even aims to subdue by armed force. It is leading the, the allied groups and immediate allies. This is the difference. We can oppress people, we can oppress opinions, we can structurally dominate things. But this is not something that is sustainable. Sustainability is not just about environment and class growing green. It is about societies, their cohesion, and their development. Four points at the end. I said language matters. I got several feedbacks from students, from colleagues, saying, actually, especially students, I enjoyed your class. I didn't understand it really what you meant. <laughs> but it made me think it. I understood half of it. I understood a, a, a third of it. I understood three quarters of it. But it made me think it. And this is something that I carry on with it. We have to use language because only then we can think. We, the environment, and language. There's no such thing as language as such. We need it to engage in disputes. In this way, clarity of language, putting it into historical context, even if it is sometimes difficult, and we think about PowerPoint presentations when we talk about PowerPoint presentations. Clarity of analysis. We have to pose clear questions. Those questions that are put, uh, put forward by others may be useful, may be important, but we should not forget that it is us who have to look for questions that it is our task to look for connections, conditions, for causal connections and conditions. And only then we will see as well the casualties of policy making if it's not properly applied. With this we have to look at realities. can count certain things, we can see certain things immediately, they're open in front of us, but in many cases these are not realities as they are. There's something underneath, there's something we have to dis uh, detect, there's something we have to work out. If we look in terms of social quality at all normative systems, we say it is social policy, if we want to continue this term, uh, using this term. It is about social justice, it is about solidarity, equal valuation, human dignity. I should know them by heart, I never do. If these values decompose, it is not about the values that decompose. It is about the conditions, the societal conditions that do not allow us to live these values. Go back to Polanyi, Karl Polanyi. He makes clear, if you read this, this, this work of the Great Transformation, you can read clearly society, capitalist society is capitalist society. It is an exception. The way we deal with each other, the way we deal with economic questions in capitalism is a very specific one. So we have to look at the decomposition of reality and then we can conclude what does it mean for the decomposition of values. 
I always have some problems with the Trinity, so I have to get something more, the fourth step. Seven Ages, Shakespeare. The painting is by Mareli, who painted basically what Shakespeare was talking about. And there's one tiny detail making me choosing this painting. And this is, I think, the real academic in my own, uh, appearing in my entire speech. Stepping out, looking from a certain distance at reality, taking an, analyt an analytical viewpoint that allows actually, and there we have a paradox, that allows this critique as an internal critique, that allows exactly to figure out the details in which we are. Having referred to Dante already, something on the brighter side, the question of enlightenment, how we get to paradise and what we have to expect there, I conclude with this. Thank you very much. Well, I don't know if I have to make you aware of your UCC, I have to make you aware that it is recorded, uh, but it's not necessarily published, or I don't know what, what the regulation there is. Um, I know it's, it's been recorded least. for posterity, but exactly which posterity I, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's only to make you aware of the fact that. There we have law. Peter, is it mere coincidence that there is one Rome being dictated in Rome and can you that direction? Well, <laughs> it is pure coincidence because I, I thought about applying actually after hearing that everybody can apply. You just have to send your C V there and whatever. <laughs> but there is a problem, they have age discrimination. And I'm too young still. So <laughs> It's pure coincidence. Yes. <laughs> On a sli slightly different note, if I make, um, do you want do you want to say a little bit about? Because I'm I i have not had a, a substantial chance to discuss it with you. The your your new position or what the Social Quality Observatory in, in Rome, what, what is its role, how it fits in with the Social Quality Foundation in, in, in the Netherlands? The short version or the long one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the medium version is that the Social Quality approach, or the, so the foundation on, on, European so on the European Foundation on Social Quality had been founded in 1995, if, I, if I'm not wrong. Uh, with a declaration primarily concerned with European, meaning European uh, social policy, criticizing it and criticizing it for a very simple reason, in my understanding, uh, simplified reason, the dominance of the economic, um, saying there must be more. Then we, we developed this over the years further as a concept, <coughs> a theoretical concept, including research on indicators and empirical studies and everything. Uh, published in the meantime uh, an, uh, three books on this on t in terms of dispute, in terms of developing, trying to develop this uh, further. Um, then a couple of years, possibly somebody knows when I went to, to Taiwan, uh, just the first time we got in touch with people in Asia. And this is a wide range of Korea, China, Taiwan, uh, including, funnily enough, uh, Australia. Um, they developed interest, uh, interest, they showed interest in it, we worked together, and they have uh, established now their own network, their own observatory, their own foundation, although it's legally not a foundation. Um, and <coughs> this discussion is, is ongoing um,
for instance, there was in, even by Mr. Sarkozy, the, the expert group on the Sen, uh, sorry, on the Stieglitz with, in collaboration with Sen and Tertelsi, uh, working on alternative measurements of well-being of social, the outcome of social policy. GDP is not enough. There was a European, European uh, initiative as well. Um, so there are wide debates, and that is where we said with the colleagues in Italy, Eurispis, uh, in Amsterdam, uh, which is the headquarter of the, of the sorry, it's Den Haag now, um, where we said we have to move it further to have something that is working as a permanent, on, on a permanent basis and coordinating things. Um, so basically it is a separate department in Eurispis Osservatore Qualita Social. Um, <laughs> so it's very much the same, um, which is basically, which will be basically my institute having stuff there, I mean, it's my department uh, at the Eurospace, uh, but at the same time it is linked to uh, Asia, actually. Um, we are building now up, or we are aiming on building something similar up in Latin America with the comrades in, in Cuba, uh, in Bolivia and Venezuela, uh, and trying to move it forward as a concept that uh, that is sufficiently developed to be implemented, to be included in uh, policy processes. We have contacts to the OECD, even to World Bank. So it's as well something where sometimes I have problems uh, with whom do I collaborate. But at the same time, that's why I said it's possibly something which I, that I didn't want to realize for a long time, the old borders, the old fractions don't exist, at least in this way, uh, that we have to look for new forms of cooperation. And then it is the question of responsibility to say at some stage, no, this is at least where I cannot go further. And I hope that this will not be the case in the near future. It is about research, it's about coordination, it's about mobilization, it's about as well cooperation where, uh, for instance, your work could be at some stage included in whichever way. Okay, maybe we can, um, we could propose that we uh, chat more informally upstairs and then I